Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Thomas and welcome back to the channel here for another video. Thanks for joining me again here today. This is video six of my seven day video challenge. Uh, today's video is going to be on the topic of free work sauce. So this is something I learned several years back at this point, really decades back at this point. I hate to date myself, but I learned this in color theory class in one of my first classes in college. I remember very clearly my teacher, Nancy, uh, she was one of my favorite teachers growing up. She told me from day one that work for family and work for friends can often tend to suck. So it may be necessary early on in your career to take some friends and family work, to take some work for your church or to take some work for whatever that isn't paying a lot or paying nothing. Sometimes you need that to build your portfolio and you need that to get your foot in the door and to actually build up something that you can show other clients that are paying work. But the problem is, is that more than often, those clients tend to be a stick in the mud and more problems than they're worth. They tend to be the worst because they often demand the most. It's strange how people, when especially when they're getting free work, they end up being the most difficult clients. They end up being the most difficult people to work for because they have unreasonable expectations. And on top of that, you're generally managing this project on top of your day job or you're managing it on top of other side client work. And it just becomes almost a resentful feeling that you get because you're getting so many requests from these people. I want this changed and can this be pink and can I have my dog in there? All of these things that just drive you crazy and unfortunately you can't fire a family member. You can't fire a friend. You can fire a client. If you aren't happy with the way the project's going, you just leave the project. But with friends and family, it's someone that you're going to be there. You're going to be stuck with for the remainder of your life. So you don't want to create some kind of bad blood between you. You don't want to end up uh, causing problems that you can't fix. And this ties very closely to another video I've already covered in this series, which is you're worth more than you think you are. I'll link it up here. If you take these jobs where you're you're working for pennies on the dollar or you're working for free, it just devalues the work. You're not inspired to create something fresh and original because you're not getting paid a dime. So there's really not a lot of motivators to do that work instead of playing a video game or going and hang out with your family. And it just devalues the work overall. And on the lower pay scale of work, it's also devaluing to you as a designer, a developer, and as a career professional to take less than your worth. So I see a lot of this on the job boards where you'll see such a discrepancy between the uh, amount per hour that people are willing to pay. You'll see these jobs where people are offering designers $10, $15 an hour. And unfortunately, there's people out there that will take those jobs. And quite honestly, it's insulting. We've paid for school. We've done a lot of work to get where we're at. We've worked hard. And to offer someone well below what they're worth, it's, it's just not good practice. So does this mean as designers, developers, and creatives that we should never take free work or discounted work? Well, not really. I know that's kind of counterintuitive to some of the other things I've said in this video, you can do it. I mean, if your wife or your girlfriend asks you for something, you best be doing that. You're going to get stabbed, man. You get you definitely got to be doing that work. But overall, you just need to be clear with expectations with anyone you're doing this free or discounted work for. If you're doing a project for your church, you can also get a lot of rewarding benefits off of doing work for free because you get some emotional value out of it and you get some good karma out of it. So those can be kind of rewards as well. If you can, trade for something. Uh, trade for, you know, work. I've traded a lot of my tattoo work for other design work and website work and logos and business card printing and variety of things. If you can trade trade, that's almost as good as getting paid. So, and that adds value on both sides of, of the fence, right? Both people, the client and you are getting some value out of the situation. So that works too. The important part is just to be clear. It's to define what's going on. It's to be transparent about your schedule and your situation. If you're not able to get to this work for three to four weeks, tell them up front. And if they don't want to wait, then they should go pay someone to do that work for them. You just need to have some type of verbal contract established with all parties so everyone's aware, everyone's clear, and everyone knows what's going on. And that's it. That's it. Once again, we have finished video six of the seven day challenge. I have one more left for you here in this series. I hope you enjoyed the content today. If you did, please take the time to like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And if you hit that bell notification, it will alert you of upcoming videos in YouTube that I put out on the channel. So thanks for your time today and we'll see you on the next video.